Hey guys, welcome to another video. So it's been six months since I had the Fuji X-H-S. I got it on the release date. I was one of the lucky few who got theirs right away from pre-order. And I wanted to give you guys my experience with this camera over the past six months. What I feel the pros and cons are four things that matter to me when using my Fujifilm gear for the content that I get. So we're gonna start off with the first one. Before we do that, um, I wanna show you guys, as I talk through this, some images from a photo walk I did today. It was hosted by um, an artist whose work was being presented at the bookstore that the photo walk was launched from. And I'll put their stuff in the comments. But um, really good local photographer. Uh, it was nice to meet him in person. I've been following him for a little bit over the past month or so. And it was nice to see his work up and everything and also get some information from the bookstore if I decide I want to try to pursue that myself. So photo walk for the month. I uh, wanted to make sure you guys go out and get, get out there and do a photo walk. It's nice, especially when it's centered around street photography. So let's get back to the X-H2S. Um, we'll first start off with build quality. I think the build quality is excellent. Um, I'll let you guys in on a quick story. About a month into having this camera, um, actually I don't want to say it's a month. When I first got the XF 150-600 millimeter, I went out to take a shot of the moon. It was one of the full moon nights, clear night. And then in front of my house, as I'm walking in the grass and set up the tripod, the camera fell off the tripod because I didn't secure it properly. Yeah, you could put a big dope or, or duh or whatever you want. It happens, it happens. The camera fell about, and with the lens, with that lens, about eight, eh, I won't say eight, excuse me, six feet height, because I'm still in the air as I was walking with it. And instead of hit, hitting the grass, of course, Murphy's Law, it hit the sidewalk, the concrete sidewalk, and bounced at least six to eight times hard. The first hit was very hard. And, he, and the camera did experience some damage. I don't know if you can see it and since I've been doing stuff, but the piece here and the piece here popped off. I filled it up with multiple glue. And the hot shoe, if you were able to see this in person and look, it's a little slanted in uh, where it also hit the ground in the tumble. And this, I picked the camera and that lens up and it was still working. I was able to take shots of the moon. I didn't realize the extent of the damage until I got in the house and looked at it a couple days later because I was really pissed that I actually dropped the camera. And you never saw a picture of that moonshot because I don't want to be reminded of it. Uh, I did have to send the lens in to be fixed. Uh, the plate that holds the the tripod shoe, uh, two screws sheared straight up. The screw heads popped right off. And uh, they replaced that and that wasn't too bad cost wise. But I knew this was so new that it was better just not, not to have it repaired since it was still working. And I've taken it out in bad weather. I've taken it out today. Uh, it's it's within uh, some rain as well. The multiple glue is doing a fantastic job. Thank you, Omar Gonzalez. I'll put a link to his channel. He did a video where he put that on his X-H2, or excuse me, X-T2 that he calls Noir camera. Ooh, and it still holds. He almost dropped it again. So build quality, stellar. You wanna see that you can damage, or not damage, accidentally damage your gear and see that it's still working and ready to go. And other than that, and with me putting the multiple glue on, you don't even, you can't even tell at a, a good look um, that this camera has actually experienced any damage. Definitely doesn't operate that way. Number two, operation. So the biggest thing I like about Fuji cameras is they tend to not mess too much with the menus. So there really isn't a lot of changes in the menu. You can literally go from one Fuji camera line to another and the menus are very similar, put together the same way. The only differences would be if it's a newer camera, it'll have a, more stuff in that menu than the previous model or previous line that came out before it. Where I don't like what Fuji does is that there's not a whole lot of consistency in button layout in the lines themselves as they progress. I've watched the XE line grow and watch buttons disappear and relocate 
Same thing with the X100V uh, line. Uh, same thing with the XT line. And I, I fear it'll be the same with the XH line as it progresses. Now granted, we went from a um, dials and buttons on the XH1 to the PASM dial, so that is definitely a change and I understand that. Uh, I just hope that as we continue down the XH line to the eventual XH3, that we don't see a whole lot of changes in the button layouts and that they try to keep it very similar to what we have here. So that would be my um, biggest con when it comes to this camera so far. As, and that's just Fuji cameras in general is that I just want the button layout to stay as, as close to this as possible as they move through the line because as you go from each camera design line in the Fuji line of cameras, the button layouts all vary. You have to, between the X Pro 3 I have and the X100V I have, I have to remember what I did with the buttons and the GFX I have as well. They're all, you know, do different things because of when they came out, what the feature set they have, and then the buttons are all in different places. So. Operation wise, once you get that down packed, other than that, again, the menu isn't, they really don't fuss with the menu and I think that's great. That's a big plus, plus there. And as you get your muscle memory down for the camera that you're using the most is great, but then you have to remember what you did with the other camera brand or other camera lines that you have, right? So with Fuji, that is definitely a, a con for me and, and it would probably be some for some other cameras too. Number three, feel in hand, it feels awesome. I don't think I have a con for the feel in hand with this camera. I didn't have one for the X-H1. I love the fact that it has a substantial grip. Reminds me back when I used to shoot Nikon, DSLRs. I, I love that bigger grip. Uh, I, I can't say I didn't in love or enjoy using my X-T2, X-T3, X-T4. Um, I love using it a lot better when I added a grip to it so it can have a better purchase and I wouldn't get as much hand fatigue using that camera. The only reason I, I would get hand fatigue on, on my Nikon DSLR that I had back in the day was because uh, the batteries and the battery uh, grip, you know, the extra grip was super heavy and you just got fatigued because you holding like a 12 pound weight for a couple of hours. Um, mirrorless, you get mirrorless because you want it to be light and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. No one said it had to be small though and no one said it had to be ergonomically uncomfortable. And I cannot say that is the case with the X-H2. I couldn't say that with the X-H line to begin with. I do like the fact that they've translated this body line style into the GFX line. Very comfortable cameras with the GFX 100S series and the 50S series. I also like the fact that they put it on the XS10, which is what I'm filming on right now. And I hope that they keep it for the XS20. They keep everything the same. Um, I really don't have an issue with that camera, but we're not talking about that camera. We're talking about this camera. And when it comes to feel and hand, I have no negatives here. Uh, button placements are great too. I, I love the reach to the dials. I have no issues with that. Um, so that, pretty much is not a problem, excuse me. And um, so there you go there. The next thing in the fourth one, final one for me is the big elephant in the room, which is the autofocus. They've done a great job on autofocus detection with the firmware three update. Before then my con, and honestly, even with that update, my con still is, is I still would like that if they do what I think it's Nikon or Canon, where you can click on the subject, put move the focus box to that person, latch or subject, latches onto them, and doesn't move from them or that subject, no matter what crosses in front of it or behind it. 
I would like to see Fuji go to that. That would be awesome if they can add that to it. And that is my still my only con when it comes to the autofocus system. Before the firmware update, straight out of box, I had no real issues with this camera because it. I only shoot Fuji, um, and it is the pretty much the the best on the Fuji camera line, especially a person who primarily only shoots one brand, that being Fuji for digital, uh, this is the best. So it got better, a lot better, with subject detection, uh, with the firmware three update. But again, my biggest con is that being able to latch onto a subject and let it stay on it and just ignore everything else that moves in and around it. So, so that would be my, my, my experience there. In conclusion, what would I like to do going forward with this camera is continue to use it for what I got it for, which is primarily video, uh, to use for this channel and any other video adventures I want to get into. You guys saw one of my latest videos. I tried my hand at trying to make it more video centric, less stills, be more cinematic, kind of want to go in that direction. And that's the main focus on this. Uh, I do plan on taking stills. Um, that is a definite. This camera takes great images, 26 megapixel with the new sensor is fantastic. And then when it comes to um, bonuses, I think the record button is a bonus. I, I didn't mention that earlier in the operation only because, sorry about that loss, battery power had to go uh, add a, bat a new battery in, but I just wanted to quickly say, I didn't talk about the record button because I think it's a bonus feature that should be on every Fuji camera, just every camera. Um, I like the ability to be in a stills mode, whether it's manual focus, auto focus, or I should say aperture auto, uh, and, or shutter, or you know, what is it, pass, uh, program, and be able to have my stuff set up in this camera for video, hit that button and start recording, hit that button and then back to taking stills. I think it's an awesome feature set. It's definitely a bonus in my mind. Not everybody likes it, uh, but there, there are folks like myself who think it's fantastic. And when using the X-H2 or X-T5, I think it would be, it is an, an option that, that would be awesome to be able to take advantage of and not have to worry about going into a full-blown video mode by switching this to video. And I think for those cameras, like the XS10 here that I'm shooting this on, it's just a phenomenal added feature and I would love to see that on the other ones. So that's a little bonus part of the conclusion. And with that, you know, hey, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my, 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 my viewpoints on my experience with this camera after six months. Um, what do you look at or is a, is a positive or a negative? And uh, we'll see in another, I don't know, year, how I feel about this camera and, and operation of it. Have a good one, guys, and see you in the next video.